think it's brilliant that doing this sort of thing because I, I suspect, and my mum might have said it, that there, was, there wasn't really this, like for them when like I was going through all my rugby journey. Mm. So uh, we did have one camp here, I think, that when I was like 16, that I think they did one parent workshop that they came to and that was probably about it in terms of how do you support uh, aspiring elite yeah, athletes yeah, yeah. so I think this is brilliant in terms of so anything like we can do to, oh, to man, help that is, is really important. And I think for me it's recognising that so many different athletes have a different narrative to express. Yeah. Like I was really heartbroken when I went into the girls deep GP, I can't remember the initials but yeah, yeah you know the yeah. Bit, I, yeah, yeah I went in there at Easter and I went, while the girls were doing all their stretching, I went and spoke to them all about like, what, what do mum and dad do that's helpful, what do they do that's unhelpful. And at least five or six girls said to me, and they didn't know that others had said this, oh, my parents don't think I, as a girl I should be playing rugby. And I'm just like, oh. flipping it, you're in an England development group, the statistics are that the majority of these girls will be representative yeah. players, that's not all of them, but that's massive. Yeah. In the boys group at this age group, there's hardly any guarantees yeah. of senior represent. In the girls, they've got it so strong yeah. that there is, and you, and you come here for, knowing your mum and dad aren't yeah, behind you that's that's really tough that's that is really tough and i like and to some respect like i've seen that in some of the games that i've played like so my parents have literally supported me from from day one like since the day a like nine-year-old daughter has gone home I'm like oh, i played rugby and i absolutely love it especially sort of back then and like there was very few and far between of us like girls playing rugby so for them to be like oh yeah, that's brilliant like and they were they were brilliant in terms of for my brother and myself in terms of like just supporting anything we wanted to do they wouldn't force us to do anything if it wasn't for us then yeah. actually as long as we were enjoying it having fun they would would support us with it and like they right from day one they ferried me about they've come to like virtually all my games whether that's like under nines to full senior level um and I know some people's parents haven't like haven't been like that. So we used to take a couple of other girls like I played with to train and into this and to that because their parents just didn't support yeah, yeah, them yeah. in that. So with your mum and dad, who are you more like humour wise, mum or dad? Um, I probably probably mum. Oh, I don't know. Probably my mum. Probably yeah. your mum. Uh, Organisational skills. Yeah, my mum. Like, we're quite organised, but then we'll be, like, quite sky at the same time. <laughs> like, what time? Yeah. Where, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. Um, where you handle conflict? Are you more like your mum or your dad? Oh, uh, my mum, yeah. You're really more like your mum. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Yeah. Brilliant. I think, yeah, more personality and characters-wise, I think, yeah. I see. Although I do, I do see a lot of me and my dad as well at times, so... In what way? Um... Probably my stubbornness I get from my cool. dad. And, and I guess being a professional sports person that stubbornness is quite key. Yeah, at, at the right times, but yeah. then sometimes it can't be that great, but um, yeah. So when you've had a bad day, like, and I guess you still feel sometimes like you've had a bad day. <laughs> All the time. And, um, what do your mum and dad do that's helpful? Um, I think they're just there to listen. So you can ring them and tell them like a situation that's happened and then they'll listen. Um, and I might have an opinion, um, but they either, they, they're quite like objective and stuff. So they'll take a, sit, like, a step back from actually, I'm quite emotionally involved in something and they see it from the outside. Yeah. And generally they'll give me really good advice on how best to deal with something. Um, which I, th I find really helpful like cause sometimes especially if you're quite personally involved in it it's quite hard sometimes to see the bigger picture and they're quite good at, at doing that and the advice sometimes it's not what you want to hear um, and once you get over that I might bring my mum or dad back in, in 10 minutes and go oh, you know what you said it's actually that is the right thing or well, the next day I was like oh I've I've taken that on board and actually I can see it from from that point of view which I think is is quite important. So they're really good at doing at doing that. Now you've got a brother. Excuse me, I can't remember whether your brother's an older brother. Or he's young. older. He's an yeah. older brother. So what? Supportive sibling. Yeah. Lots of banter. Yeah. What does that look like? No, we we've, we've got on pretty well um, all the way through our childhood, apart from sort of the teenage years. Um, so we had two next door neighbours 
both boys and I used to be a bit of a tomboy like out on the street playing with them so it's grown up having that natural like sibling competitive rivalness um, and then sort of mid-teens we like obviously hormones kick in and <laughs> probably fought like cat and dog but actually I think that has actually helped with my rugby so I can deal with an older brother and you get to a certain point and you can like match him and when he sort of turned 15, 16 and all of a sudden became very strong and I was like oh I best back away from this otherwise I'm going to get hurt um, and then from my rugby he's been like so supportive he'll come to my games um, but it's really nice so I've just been on holiday with him all and like, they obviously know how important my rugby is, but sort of when you go home, it kind of like they'll ask about it and we'll talk about it. But then also it's nice to have that switch off that like you can just be, I could be Sarah Hunter, yeah. like, like, and not be Sarah Hunter, the England player or Sarah Hunter, the rugby player, which is it's sometimes really refreshing. So, yeah. and then the amount of banter and like Mickey take and I get from my brother is, it is quite funny, um, but it's probably because I'm the youngest. Um, and then my mum and dad usually join in with them as well. <laughs> Helps keep your feet on the ground. A hundred percent. Like they have certainly not let me um, get an ego or get above my station. So for sure mm -hmm. I get brought down quite. Well, some of the things that kind of we talk about with coaches at, at Development Pathways now is kind of how parents can help keep their kids feet on the ground and so there are some challenges like around uh, self-organisation is that, that parents are doing a lot for kids perhaps yeah. older than is helping them develop that, that skill set yeah. you're now working at a, a uni yeah. um, for parents who've got kids coming through what what might that look like do you think what kind of tips as, as Sarah Hunter coach would you give to to parents whose kids are 16 17 starting to think about university looking beyond that yeah I think it's like I know it sounds quite naive but I always remember sort of um in terms of like just managing like me getting myself ready for for game day like I have to pack my own bag I'd have to like make sure that I'd have my boots and my gum shield and the kit that I required or like the snacks that I needed um, like even to little things like not that I did it very often but my mum and dad would always make sure that I clean my boots and I looked after my own kit and equipment because Brilliant. that's what I was going to need so rather than them doing everything uh, for me and things like that I would be responsible for it but I think also I grew up sort of watching them like cook and them like asking my dad advice on how you make a lasagna like a white sauce or like how you cook chicken and things things like that which actually when you come to university are so important especially if you want to be an athlete to have nutrition such a big part of it to be able to help you do that you see like some of the youngsters come and like, they generally can't do anything they don't they wouldn't be able to go to the shop and buy like the ingredients to make a bolognese or like know how to cook an egg or cook some chicken and things like that I'm like oh my god you're like 18 years old and you've never had to do this for yourself and I think that's really important that if they can't do that or they don't have to turn a washing machine on or things things like that like every day like basic like things to, to be able to live is it's pretty hard when you want to be becoming a, an elite athlete. Yeah I took I talk, talk to parents about the need to kind of have the um BCC not the BBC but the BCC which is you know can they budget can they cook yeah. can they clean yeah. and and if they can't do those by the time that, to a level yeah. to self equip by the time they're yeah. 18 that, that that's not healthy really. oh definitely and I think so a lot of my friends when they're younger like in terms of they needed something they got given money for it so as soon as I was old enough and I I got a I got part-time job like I wanted to be able to like mm -hmm. earn my own money to be able to spend it and like you say, be able to, to know what to spend it on and not waste it all. So actually when I came to university or, I went, or if people go off to now, you see 18-year-olds um, getting full-time contracts that they go off and actually they're going to be expected to, to live by themselves, obviously under some guidance, but like, and they're probably going to be getting money and then all of a sudden they've got money that they've never had before and it's like, oh my God, what do I do this? I'm going to go and buy like £150 pair of boots and I'm going to buy like the latest headphones that are like ridiculous amounts of money and I'm going to buy this and that and all of a sudden, well, 
what am I going to do to eat and to be able to get the essentials that are going to going to get me through the next two months because I've just blown everything I've got like on the non-essential items but it's got money that I've never had before so those little luxuries that you start to if you have that as a, a younger person then you start to just become a bit more responsible and like understand and appreciate the value of of money before um, yeah, yeah. it becomes too late no, I think that's really important so my son's 13 and you know we've said we'll pay for all the educational trips but yeah. he wants to go on tour next year to mm -hmm. Ireland with his school and it's it, you know it's 650 quid and we've said you, you've got two year lead in yeah. you've got to pay for that yourself yeah. and actually he's worked really hard he's set up a little business he's done jobs for granny yeah. and grandma and, and, and at times he's battled that and moaned at us about that but other times it's like actually I'm really going to enjoy this yeah. now because I've earned it haven't yeah. I and, oh, and I think be. like I'm really pleased that we've been stubborn yeah. <laughs> in that we're really pleased he's going and want to yeah. help facilitate that but um but yeah no that's really helpful um a couple more questions if that's all right yeah, so yeah. so you, you know your England cap team you've had over 100 caps um just a phenomenal career lots of highs winning the world cup as a player um how was how was it with mum and dad when you lost the World Cup as a player? Yeah. Tell, I'm sorry to bring that up. That oh, seems like no. really horrible, but no, but no. obviously the role of a parent is those incredible oh. highs, and then that, yeah. that 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 those really ugly dark days. And, yeah. and how was that? Um, it was like the first one was obviously 2010, and I remember finding my mum and dad in the crowd, and I. I just had no words. I, I literally just cried into them until um, I had nothing left. And sometimes parents don't need to say anything. Like there was, there was probably nothing my mum or my dad could have said to make me feel any better. But just them being there and like holding me, that was like all that I I needed. Can I just give Katie? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So, sorry. That's all right. That was just like the best bit she said so far. Oh, no, 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 it's cool. He was like, come on, she might be there. And I was like, no. I'm so no, sorry. No, no, it's fine. I'll be out there. Bye. Yeah. Let's do that again because yeah. that's what I tell parents you don't yeah. have to say stuff. Yeah. Just let them yeah. grieve. So yeah. that was really cool. So, um, well, cup, yeah. two World Cup losses. Yeah. Sorry, I should have realised no, no. that. I should have wikipedia you a bit more. I've got that. <laughs> um, so, you know, obviously your mum and dad supported you to yeah. some really amazing highs. I'm sorry to kind of bring up yeah. the dark stuff, but obviously you, you lost the World Cup as a player, then you won it as a player, and then you lost it as, as a player and as captain yeah. as well with that added, added kind of weight of responsibility. Yeah. How was it with mum? What did they do helpful yeah. there? What could they have done better or whatever? So, 2010, the first, and that was probably the first, that's the first time I'd lost an England shirt, which is like a big, not knowing how to lose in a, in a white shirt was pretty difficult, but um, I, rem I remember finding them and then I don't think, I don't think they said anything um, because there's, there was nothing that they could have said that would made me feel any better and I think they knew it. Um, so they just held me and I remember sobbing and just crying like, hysterically like until like I had nothing I had no tears left in me I, I genuinely I, and the, the 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 biggest memory I have of that of them was just how proud they were of me regardless of the result um but I think at that moment in time the rugby player went out the window and to them I was just a little girl who was like unconsolable mm. um and I think that was the biggest thing that like knowing that that they were there for me at like the probably the toughest time that I could have, but I I didn't need to hear anything from them. All I needed to, for them to do was was to hold me and like be there to give me the biggest hug when I needed it the most. Um, and like it's it's clear as day, and that was eight years ago, <laughs> which is uh, pretty resounding. And then I just remember them being being there for like for me for that sort of next period of time so I went away on holiday to like a few days later to France with them and they were just brilliant like they didn't try to cheer me up because they didn't try to like make things all right because they kind of gave me that period of time that I needed for myself to just try and get over it so like if I was feeling down or sad they would 
they would be there but they would they would give me that time like they didn't try and make anything false around the situation that I was going through and um, which was which was brilliant um, because they know you I and I think that was really important for, for me to know that I didn't have to try and put on an act in front of them um, I could I could be upset and I could be grumpy and moody and they they understood that um, and then in last year again I remember finding them um, and my brother was there and my niece um, my sister-in-law and again exactly the same thing like it was sort of like <laughs> round two of the situation but and I think for me the, the biggest thing I feel like because they've supported me so much that I kind of felt like I'd let them down which is ridiculous to, to think about and again they were like they were just brilliant like they consoled me in exactly the right way they just held me and again they just said how proud of everything they were of what I'd done and um, my niece and I saw her the other day because you know on your like memory thing it comes up and it was obviously a year ago I th yeah Sunday that we lost and it was honestly I like still seeing it now like uh, like obviously gets me quite like emotional about just saying how um, how like a four-year-old like talking in a in a England uh, shirt with a face paint on and I'm just like oh saying how proud she was of me never give up and that she still loved me and I was just like oh like <laughs> that and that at the end of the day sport going out over the window they they still see you as you the human side of you and actually you're a person and that athlete bit goes out the window and it's trying to be as supportive in the right way as possible and then over the next few days like my mum and my brother and my dad just checked in with me whether that was like a text or that was a phone call and I remember being just in silence on the phone to my mum because I, I just couldn't speak I couldn't get any words out after it but that was fine like um, and she would just chat and I was just like I, I couldn't speak back and it was known that that was all right um, and they were again like brilliant with that like just making sure that they knew that I probably didn't want to talk too much about it at that point but just like a text so, like just asking them all right or saying we love you or we're proud of you or things like just little things like that just means the world and to be honest the result doesn't matter to them yes they would like but they just want to make sure that you're you're all right, all right. yeah so that's brilliant I love it Thanks. it sounds like your mum and dad actually came to my sessions yeah um, <laughs> One last question. So you've got a niece. So yeah. she's five. Yeah. Five. That's brilliant. I mean, you know, you, you, Rocky Clark, just long-time stalwarts of the England. So obviously Rocky's just retired, but you know, your hundred caps have seen the game go from pretty much being amateur now to this kind of professional and now semi-professional. Um, you know, as you talk to your niece, kind of about being a girl and. You know, I've got daughters. Kind of, what what's exciting you about women's sport and where women's sport's going, and what are the challenges? Do you think that as parents we need to be, um, and as aunts and as grandparents, whatever, kind of really still firing up our our, our daughters and our um, nieces, and then our nephews and our sons yeah. to see as yeah. well at the same time around women's sport. I think for me, the biggest exciting opportunity that these five-year-olds are like and six-year-old these young these young children especially females the opportunity for them is absolutely incredible the excitement i was just saying the other day that i I'd, I'd love to be a 16 17 18 year old girl now coming into coming into rugby or sport mm. in general like the opportunities that they've got to play in probably the professional era and get paid to play a, a sport that they love and the, the level that it's going to, the exposure women's sport has got, you see more increased sponsorship opportunities coming in, the profile of, of, of female athletes is going through the roof and I think that's really exciting and it's exciting to be part of on that fringe but for these young players that can look and say like from an early age that is what, that is what I want to do and um, with that I think the challenge probably comes and it's probably where um, men's sport is that at the minute probably a lot more younger players female players will make it to international level um especially if they're sort of in age group stuff yeah. like 15 plus 
that they probably got a higher percent of chance to, to read represent, representational honours. But I think the more we go down this route, the, the decrease in percentage that is. So then that challenges us managing young girls' expectations is that not everyone's going to make it. Yeah, right. And I think that's probably where men's sport is at the minute that actually it's a lot more competitive to, to get to that so i think that'll be an interesting challenge in how we as people in the game are like sort of coaching and um, side of the game and parents at that level and the managerial like um like part of the the game and the infrastructure can manage young players expectations so that actually if they don't make it that they're still involved in the game in some way, shape or form and we don't lose really good young people from the game. Brilliant. Sarah Hunter, England captain, lightning coach and player. Brilliant, thank you. That, no that has been really insightful yeah. into the household and I think kind of listening to you speak and tell me if you don't think this is a fair summary but it really does sound like your parents have provided you with a, a real anchorage in your own identity as to who you are that's enabled you to you know, there is a life of living on yeah. the edge at a number eight yeah. in, a, in an England shirt, and it, it sounds like they've just provided a harbour for you to kind of just go and rest in and recuperate and just be Sarah and yeah. to, to know that you're loved and held. I'm yeah. sure there are days when you wrestle with who you are because yeah. every human being wrestles with who you are, but it sounds like your mum and dad and together with your brother and your family provide. Is that a fair oh, summary? Absolutely, like I couldn't, and I've said this, I couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for a better, like, upbringing in terms of in terms of that and believe you they've they've supported me and challenged me in, in, in exactly exactly the right way when I've needed it Brilliant. and yeah I feel like I can be Sarah Hunter the rugby player and Sarah Hunter the family member in equal measure and they know exactly when I want to be one and when I want to be the other and I, I feel like almost when you go home it's just like this sanctuary where you can be whoever you want to be and they'll be there to, to support you um, and I couldn't have asked for, for any more than that from, from them and I feel very privileged to, to have that when you look at in at some other other mm -hmm. people and haven't necessarily got that so yeah they've been absolutely brilliant and have been the reason why I've probably got to where I've got to. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you.